Hey and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. In today's video we're going to be doing some screen replacement as you can see in the example here. So the first thing we need to do is change this from the 3D view to the movie clip editor. And then we can go ahead and load in our movie clip. So the movie clip I'm using I downloaded from um, our website hollywoodcamerawork.com. It's a free download so if you want to use this too I'll throw a link in the description. Make sure you prefetch your movie clip as well. Okay, so when we play through this, we can see the green on the screen, um, yeah, it's, it goes a bit lighter and darker, so that will cause us some trouble later on. Also, we're, we're going to be using a plain track deform, um, and the hand actually goes past one of the corners, so we're going to need to offset one of the trackers as well. But it's not too bad, we can, uh, we can work with this. So what we need to do is change a few settings on our track settings. Change this motion to location, rotation, scale. Also change that to previous, and check normalize. You can also enable the search size as well. So the idea is we're going to track the four corners of this screen and you need four tracks for the planar track to work so keep that in mind. So I'm just going to press control and click, place down the markers and if you want you can zoom right in and try and get this close to the edge as possible but um, it's not too important this step. And we know this corner here is going to cause us some trouble later on but uh, I'm just going to place this track here for now and then just place this track up here like so now I'm not sure if it helps with tracking but what I like to do is rotate the tracks so I can see them a little bit better and um, so if we select this one and if I start press R to rotate so if we look over here we can see it's more of a right angle so I'm not sure if it actually helps with the tracking process but it helps me see if it sticks to the uh, the point better if that makes sense <laughs> so you don't need to do this um, but I mean if you want to go ahead and press R to rotate them okay so we select all of them and then if we track this forward we can see most of them work well all three of them work except this one and it, this one obviously fails because the hand goes in the way as you can see so what we need to do is find a point where we can uh, just offset it so I'm just gonna find where it fails and then just jump a few frames backwards make sure we don't see the finger at all and then what we need to do is clear the tracks forward for those. so if we press the arrow forward arrow it clears all the tracks you know after this frame okay so now we've got this if we press G twice so press G and then G again so we're actually offsetting the track point so I'm just going to use this letter here as a point to track from and again, make sure you press G twice, otherwise it'll just move the tracking marker. So, place this somewhere else. And all we need to do is just track forward a few frames until the hand clears it. So somewhere like this. So maybe one more. Yeah, so now we can press G twice again. Press G, G, and then move it back over. And click. And then again, you can just track forward. Now it loses again because the hand comes back down, so we're just going to have to offset it again. So just go back a few frames. So yeah, it's the same process. We just need to find out where it fails. So I'm just going to jump forward. So around here, just clear the frames. And then now we can just offset this by pressing G, G. And let's just track forward a few frames. And you can go ahead and press GG again and then move it back. It's pretty simple. So you may have done this a few times already when you've been tracking. Just things getting in the way, just offset the track. I track that forward again and that should work fine. So what we need to do now is actually put the planar track in. So if we go, come over here to solve. We can jump to the end frame since the screen's bigger there. How you're going to need to make sure that you select all of them first before you press this button. And once you've created the plane track, we can see it just adds a square to the screen. So what we need to do is actually align it up to the screen. So just grab the points, drag them. And this step, you actually want to be more accurate. You want to make sure that you know it's quite even and not, you don't see any of the green. So just. Try and zoom in and get it as close as you can. Now 
and then we can go ahead and change this to the node editor. So make sure you check scene, use nodes and backdrop. So what I'm going to do is just change this, so I'm going to press shift S and change this to a movie clip. Load in our movie clip and we're good to go. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is shift A, go down to distort. We're going to add in a plain track deform. And make sure we select the movie clip. Select the camera. And select this one. I want to select the plain track. So now we can mix these two together. So shift A, color mix. Plug this one onto the bottom. Plug this one in. And also we need to check the viewer box to enable the alpha. And we can see that that black square just sticks to the screen. So we can go ahead and add in a, an image or a movie clip, it's entirely up to you. I'd also enable motion blur and play around with the shutter settings. But I'm going to just turn this off for now until I'm finished. Okay, so I'm going to shift A and add in a movie clip. Again, you can add in an image, movie clip, whatever you want. I'm going to use an image node though, so I can offset the, uh, the frames. But again, that's entirely up to you. So the movie clip I'm using is from a previous tutorial, but you can use anything you want. Um, so yeah, I used an image node instead of a movie clip node, so I could set the offset here. Let's offset it by, say, 50 frames, and that's because there's like a, it starts from black. So the movie clip works fine. So the only thing we need to do now is make sure the hand goes in front of the screen. So I just added a scale node there just to make it a little bit bigger. But yeah, we want to make sure we can bring the hand back. Shift A, go to mat. So we're going to be using a keying node. And this is what you use when you're doing green screening. But we're actually we're not going to be using it for this value, we're going to be using it for the mask. Okay, so I'm not going to go into too much detail how to get rid of the green. Uh, that's probably for a future tutorial. So I'm just going to show you how I'm going to change this into a mask. Select the color picker. But we can see we've got some trouble there since it's uneven. So the green is entirely uneven. So we need to manually select a different color. So I'm just going to drag this into the white value a bit more until the green's gone. Don't worry about the background. We're not worried about that for now. So now we can see the mask. The, the only thing we're looking for is when the hand goes in front of the black screen, we want the hand to be quite white because um, it's just going to be a mask. So you can play around with this. So we need to clip the blacks, clip the whites, play around with all these settings here. Again, it's probably for a future tutorial since it's quite in depth. If you want, you can just do the same settings that I used. Like I say, just play around with the blacks and the whites and the feathering distance as well. So you get something that looks like that. <laughs> and again, we're not going to be using this image output. We're going to be using the mask output, so don't worry about that. So shift A and a color spill. And make sure that's not using it. So we just want to put it on this, uh, this input here. And this just gets rid of the green on the hand and... So as we can see, without the color spill and with the color spill, it just takes away some of that green color. If you, so you might not need to do that. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so let's add in that um, the hand. So Shift A or Shift D, the mix node. Let's move these over. So let's take the feed from. We don't want to. We no longer want to take the feed from here. We want to take it from this node here. So this is now the color corrected one or the color spilled corrected one, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Let's plug this into the bottom value, and then what we want to do is just mask out this now. So to make sure we take the mask, this middle one here, plug this into the factor. We can see the hand is now added over the top. It's pretty simple. So again, these are the settings that I used. If you want to pause it and use the same settings, but it's not perfect. Obviously, you want to put more work into it. This is just an example. Um, but like I say, if you increase the feather distance, um, you could get a better result. 
So as well, make sure you activate the motion blur because uh, it does look a little bit better. So you can go ahead and set the frame, frame rate and your resolution and your file output and you can go ahead and render. So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like and as always, thanks for watching.